Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is a case of atypical meningioma. So, this is a case of a 73 year old male patient who presented with headache and was found to have an extra axial brain tumor. And as you can see here from the low power magnification, this is a pinky tumor that is attached to the dura. And the low power uh, appearance is more suggestive of meningioma. However, there were areas of punctate necrosis here and there. And this is one of the areas on high power magnification. So this is a focus of punctate necrosis that is identified as well as another focus of necrosis. And the first thing that we want Want to ask once we encounter an area of necrosis whether there was a previous history or attempts at embolization of the meningioma because sometimes if the tumor was found to be vascular on imaging they sometimes might attempt to do embolization which would induce necrosis in the tumor but this case was negative for history of embolization thus this necrosis is considered to be spontaneous now when a Whenever we examine and for when we go from one uh, area in the tumor to the other, it all shows the similar morphology with sheet growth pattern rather than the usual meningotheliomatous or fibrous or any special type of meningioma. So this sheeting of a growth pattern in the absence of any identifiable, well discerned uh, um, pattern of a growth really is considered another feature that we evaluate whenever we encounter meningioma just to make sure whether this is typical or atypical. So now we have spontaneous necrosis and we have the sheety growth pattern. So we started to uh, really suspect that this might be an atypical meningioma. What we started also to see is a prominent nucleolus in the meningioma cells. So in addition to the sheety growth pattern, we started to notice prominent nucleoli. And remember, prominent Prominent nucleoli is another feature of atypical meningioma. So, so far we have three features that would support that this case is atypical meningioma. Number one, the spontaneous necrosis in the absence of history of embolization. Uh, uh, number two, the sheet growth pattern in the absence of, uh, absence of a well-defined pattern of a growth. And number three is a prominent nucleoli. Remember that the usual meningioma whenever now you encounter the usual or a classical meningioma, these don't contain any nucleolus. They contain inclusions, but they don't contain, they don't show nucleoli. So in the presence of these three features, this uh, case would really fall into the category of atypical meningioma. Now we tried to look for mitotic activity. It was in the range of two to three mitoses per 10 high power fields, but not really reaching the a threshold of four or more per 10 high power fields to render it as atypical meningioma on the basis of uh, mitosis. Now, there were some foci of what was in a way suspicious. Probably this could be a brain invasion. This is the dura, the thick uh, fibrous tissue here is the dura, and these are the leptomeninges. Uh, however, we just in case that to ensure this uh, this was not a, a brain invasion, we did a GFAP. So the tumor cells were showing positivity with the PR. It's like moderate positivity with PR staining, and the GFAP. This is our focus that I just showed you, and the GFAP is far away. is very neat actually at the edge of the meningioma. But ruling out the possibility of invasion to the brain. P53 was not really a, 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 a mutant or abnormal. It showed this mosaic pattern. Now, sometimes they describe absence of staining of H3K27 ME uh, uh, trimethylated in atypical meningioma, but this, in this case, it was retained. I have to say that my experience thus far with performing this stain on atypical meningioma did not reveal any 
loss or absence of staining in atypical meningioma. I have yet to see it. I did not do it on a large number of cases, but this is what reported in literature. And the CHI-67 was in the range of 5%. So the final diagnosis of this case was atypical meningioma, CNSWHO grade 2, based on the presence of the spontaneous foci of necrosis, the sheet growth pattern, and on high power magnification, uh, the prominent nuclear these features, the three features, would support the diagnosis of atypical meningioma, even in the absence of increased mitotic activity or a brain invasion. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.